welcome back to another edition of Research Fantasy Presents, our MLB DFS Pitcher Picks for Monday, May 8th, 2017. I am your host, as always, Nick from CWE, and I am on full tilt from Talladega. Uh, I recorded a five-minute rant that apparently dropped because of the frame issue, so guess what, guys and gals? You got lucky. You don't have to hear five minutes about how uh, I lost... uh, my position at the top of single entry tournaments on that accident. And uh, anyway, premium package will remain open, like I said, <laughs> um, n- until this coming Tuesday, not tomorrow, but next Tuesday. We'll include Kansas in it. Go back. If you didn't sign up already, just sign up, check it out. Look at what the driver by driver breakdown said. I think we were pretty much right on point with how everything played out prior to the accident and really post accident. Cause I said for even a lot of guys like David Reagan and, and Matt D'Ambetto, like not worse plays, but you're going to need a big accident and them to make it through. That's exactly what happened. Uh, interesting slate of baseball today to say the least. Um, going to be honest in saying that the pitching options just don't really jump off the page at me. I'm not overly excited about what we've got to work with today. Um, not every day is going to be a pitcher where you get a day where you get Clayton Kershaw or Scherzer. So we're going to have to be a little bit creative. Also, I'm trying to look right now. There just seems to be a, a general confusion about what was going to happen with some starting pitching. That looks like it is going to be, uh, that looks like it is settled at this point. So just want to throw out a couple of guys I like. I, I'm actually, and let's talk just overall landscape. Um, Jacob DeGrom in a situation at home against the Giants. Giants don't strike out a lot. We saw him kind of hand it to Clayton Kershaw in Kershaw's back-to-back outing. So not going to lie with there being a little bit of fear there because of the fact that the Giants don't want to strike out. They can be pesky. They can get on base. They can nickel and dime you to death. Uh, So I'm not going to be off Jacob DeGrom, but I don't want to have a huge position on him either. Obviously, Arietta is in cores, so that's a a route I would prefer not to take. Um, Carlos Martinez, you know, can't, I can't, I just can't, believe in him as a cash game pitcher I think you're more than fine using him in tournaments Masahiro Tanaka for whatever reason I just don't like him uh he's just not one of my favorite players to use uh but I'll have some exposure to him uh that leaves us with Bauer and Stroman both of those guys are just in a a tight situation for me where I think I just like to look somewhere else um I can see you know five home runs coming from that game in Toronto with both uh, Bauer, Bauer allow, allows a lot of hard contact, and Stroman seems to give up some home runs. So where I'll start, and uh, you know, some of this is reactive to Chicago being in cores, hoping that that kind of wakes um, the bats up. In hindsight, this could be a decent opportunity to fade the uh, the. Cubs side after all they played an 18 inning game last night so might be worth uh spending up to DeGrom just to get a little stability but I I think I'm fine with looking at somebody like um and I can't believe I'm going to mention some of these players but uh Trevor Cahill we live in a world where Trevor Cahill is a DFS option he's pitching at home Always a plus. Petco Park, definitely a much better park. The curveball really seems to be hitting on all cylinders this year. Uh, He's going to be priced lower because he plays for the Padres, and he's not been a guy who's been priced up in the past. The results have been a little more uh, all over the place, but nothing that's really crippling that I can recall. He has a you know, basically two runs, four runs, one run, five runs, no runs. Um, the, the the Rangers are a team that has a capable offense, certainly, but they could still be shut down as well. Obviously, this moving into a pitcher's park for them does not bode well for their overall upside. 
in tournaments at his price. I really don't mind playing him. I would just double check to ensure that he's playing uh, San Diego and Los Angeles as of last night. Could not seem to figure out exactly what was going to go on with their pitching rotation. Um, I have not seen Cahill confirmed as a starter yet. He is listed as a starter on ESPN. So like I said, you're definitely just going to want to double check. Next up, uh, I'll go with whoever pitches for the Dodgers because like I just said, right now, if you read the blurb on Brandon McCarthy, they are considering skipping his start this week. He already switched days with Kershaw. Inevitably, the game with the Padres was rained out last night. So, you know, his start should be moved to today, but there's no guarantee. So, Brandon McCarthy or Alex Wood on the mound against Pittsburgh for the same reason I just kind of mentioned that I don't really love the idea of playing the Cubs um, traveling after a long, long game to Coors. I would say the same thing about Pittsburgh. You know, they are traveling from Pittsburgh, I believe. Yeah, I think they're from Pittsburgh. They're going all the way to the West Coast to play Los Angeles. I just don't like when those situations happen. I mean, yes, they're adults, but that's a huge uh, that's a huge traveling situation. I mean, you're going completely across country. So I think that's one of those situations where stats can be one thing, but just I don't want to say common sense because admittedly, I a lot of times don't notice this type of stuff until it's too late. And I've really told myself in the last few months, like pay more attention to when basketball teams are going from the East Coast to the West Coast, maybe on a short break. Not really that prevalent in the NBA uh, because you usually get at least a day off in between. But definitely with baseball, like if they're going to be doing a a West Coast road trip, maybe lay off in the first game. That could be a, a game where they're a little more sluggish at the plate. I get it. They're not facing Clayton Kershaw. Uh, so it's not like a, a dire situation, but you've all, we've all been on planes before. It takes a little bit out of you. You're going three different time zones, tough to adjust. So that's where I'm landing there tonight. Finally, Gio Gonzalez to me makes kind of like the ultimate tournament play. The Baltimore Orioles not good against lefties in terms of strikeouts this year. Uh, that didn't stop them from putting four runs up on Jose Quintana yesterday. So I do understand the risk is there with Gio. Also with Gio, he's not a high strikeout pitcher, so you do lose some of that upside. But if they continue to strike out at that 27% rate, they're giving the pitcher a little extra ammunition to work with. So I don't mind using him. Again, uh, I'm looking at it being a situation where I want to get some exposure to Colorado, at least Colorado. And with that being said, you know, I'm looking a little more at spending down on pitching. That'll wrap it up for today. Our top three tournament options, uh, forced top three tournament options, Trevor Cahill, Brandon McCarthy, or Alex Wood, whoever ends up pitching. Gio Gonzalez, thanks for joining us. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel below. Head over to researchfantasy.com. Sign up for our MLB mailing list. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Research and Win. And join us again tomorrow.